In this video, I'm going to show you how I modified this aeroplane here, which is a shark face. This is a kit that we make at the Vintage Model Company, and how I basically just stuck a huge motor on it, a load of new electronics, uh, tasted it up a bit, and yeah, made it into a high-speed aeroplane. Or, well, hopefully I did. I'm yet to test it. This plane is called the Shark Face. It's got a bit of a weird name, but um, it's in our heritage range as a sort of vintage kit that uh, I believe it is based on an aeroplane that was around in the 1960s. And yes, so I built this in 2019. Um, and since then, it's sort of been uh, stripped of all of its electronics and left um, idly on the side. I feel like this plane is actually, it's a really nice flying aeroplane. Um, I had a lot of fun with it on the, the few flights I did back last, well, not last summer, the summer before last. Uh, but yeah, it needs a new lease of life. It's, it's a nice aeroplane, it flies quite well. Um, but there are a few things that I wanted to change. Uh, one being the speed, a uh, speed envelope. Um, so making this a more exciting plane in terms of its top speed. Um, but also in the control, I didn't have enough aileron control before, so I've changed the ailerons and some other bits and bobs that I will go into in just a second. So I started with the bare airframe. As I just said, there were no electronics in this. Um, there were no servos in the fuselage. There was just a lot of space for doing exactly what I wanted to this plane, sticking whatever I wanted in it. Firstly, therefore, I started at the front end, uh, deciding what type of powertrain to put in the aeroplane. Um, so I got this motor from my electronics box, my spare electronics box. It's a uh, 2836 3000 kV NTM prop drive motor. Um, this thing pulls about 700 watts of power. So you need a very big battery and a very capable electronic speed controller to make <laughs> the most out of it. Um, the electronic speed controller is a 60 amp ESC that I'm, I'm using in this aircraft. I decided to put this in the battery compartment instead of below the battery compartment because it wouldn't fit in there. Because this aeroplane was meant to use a small battery or a small fuel tank just in, in here underneath the hatch, um, I, I wouldn't have room for the big battery that I need to use now. So what I did was put the electronic speed controller, the really big beefy speed controller, um, underneath this hatch where the old battery used to used to live. The big battery um, can actually live underneath the main wing. Now you might be thinking, well that's going to mess the CG up because you need the battery as far forward as possible to balance this thing out um, roughly here. But because the uh, motor is quite a a big one. Uh, the electronic speed controller is fairly heavy as well, and the motor's so far um, out on the nose, it actually balances just fine with the battery underneath the wing. Now, the first thing I had to do when using this uh, speed controller and this motor uh, was change the bullet connectors because they weren't actually the same size. This involved soldering, so um, I used my soldering station to quickly change the bullet connectors. It only took about three minutes, four minutes, something like that. If you don't have your tools accessible like this, I very much recommend not having them hidden away in drawers, but having them out on your build worktop because it really helps with just speeding up the process of doing mods like this to your aircraft and for just building things quickly. Um, if you have them in drawers, then you're more likely to forget that they exist and um, also it just, it just incentivizes you to, to use them. Uh, without the extra effort. So yes, anyway, that being said, um, what else on the plane did I have to do? Oh yes, so I um, tested all my electronics, of course, before I put them in the plane. Um, and to speed up the installation process, I made sure to label all of the wires um, so that I would know where to plug them in in the future. Right, why don't I show you what else I did to the plane by just taking the wing off, taking the hatch off and showing you it. I'll just take these elastic bands off. Well, I wasn't joking when I said that this thing was full of electronics. Um, at the front, we've got the 60 amp ESC, as I mentioned earlier. Under here, under the main wing, there is a bit of a, um, a nest of wires. Um, we've got the receiver here, which sits on top of the battery. And this is a 1400 milliamp hour four cell. And it's a high discharge battery with, I can't remember how many, uh, what the C rating is. I think it's uh, around 130 C. Um, there are two servos at the back here. This is the 
uh, original positioning of the servos, but instead of five gram servos, I've now gone for nine gram servos. They're just the cheap um, plastic gear servos, but gives you a bit more power for the uh, for using the control surfaces at higher speeds. That's about it, I suppose. I'm using a Spectrum setup. So uh, yes, I've got this um, AR620 receiver and the uh, the wing just plugs straight into the aileron servo on that. Um, yeah, you can see the bottom of the aileron servo there. Let's see how heavy this thing is because I've not actually weighed it yet, but I have a feeling it's going to be a little on the weighty side. Okay, uh, I've not got this piece together, obviously, but um, I'll just plonk all of this stuff on the scales. Um, and then we're also going to have a camera on board for the first flight. Um, that's coming out at 562 um, grams. So half a kilogram, just over half a kilogram. That's actually not too bad. Um, the wing area isn't that big on this plane, but um, yeah. As we know, going faster with a smaller wing area will give you the same lift as going slower with a bigger wing area, <laughs> pretty much. All right, I'm going to put this thing back together and um, yeah, we'll take it up to the flying field and see how it flies. So I went up to the field and I <laughs> practiced my launching technique. Unfortunately, I had a problem with recording the sound on this video. So this is just a quick test flight. You won't hear how awesome the plane sounds until the next video where I'll be really pushing the speed um, to its max. But anyway, on this evening, I wasn't really pushing it too fast, but I did have Tim here doing the drone filming for me. So um, we've got this quadcopter footage for you to look at and uh, really appreciate how fast this, the shark face was going. On the first flight, I was just going to get used to how the plane behaved in the air. That is, if I could actually get it up into the air um, with the hand launch being a little bit tricky. On this hand launch, I broke a propeller, even though it landed in all of the long grass here. And I also broke the tail, which was uh, a bit annoying. But with some glue, it was fixed and ready to go again. With Tim providing a little assistance so I could keep my hands on the sticks and actually get it up into the air without an issue. However, it still rolled completely over onto its back when Tim threw it, but I managed to instantly roll the plane back over the right way up and climb away. With that, Tim could chase me around and I could get used to the plane in the air. This thing really feels like a brick in the air when you're flying it. When you come off the power, the aircraft will suddenly just stop flying. To get any lift at all, you have to put the aircraft into such a high angle of attack and just plow through the air and you'll sink all the way down to the ground with your nose up. So the key thing that I had to do when flying the plane was absolutely hammer it most of the time, which meant that Tim was really on the edge of his speed envelope when he was trying to chase me around. That was flight one, so I landed, changed a few things, changed the battery, and then I could go for a round two, which involved another hand launch and another near miss. I'm pretty sure that this plane was flying near to that 100 mile an hour barrier at some points during the, uh, the two flights, but we didn't have a GPS on board, so I will be taking this plane up again to really push the speed to its max now I'm a bit more confident in it with a GPS unit on board. The wing held up even with these aggressive turns. I sort of flew a very standard pattern over and over again, so I didn't have to think too much. I didn't have to process, and that was probably the best way to go because with the sun downrange here, it was a bit difficult to see what orientation I was in at some points. I flew quite low around the field here, just so you as the viewer of this video can see exactly how fast I was going with reference to all of the terrain moving quickly beneath the two aircraft. With the plane back in one piece, I want to say thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you on the very next video. Remember to check out this aeroplane and all of our products in all of our ranges on the Vintage Model Company store. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.